Welcome to another shave here in the Soap Thing Project. In this video, I'm going to do a barrister and man shave. It's going to be Reserve Waves. And anybody who knows a bit about barrister and man could tell you this is an older sample. Coming from a time when barrister and man's old school scents had their own soap base. So, Reserve Spice, Reserve Original, and this one and a couple other ones. It was made in the Reserve Soap base rather than Excelsior. And then finally, Barrister and Man moved everything over to Omnibus, so it's just all one soap base. Nonetheless, this is my all-time favorite scent from Barrister and Man. I have a full-size tub of this back in the States, so before we go any further, I'm just going to spoil it for you. It's soap thing approved without a doubt. So, good stuff though from Barrister and Man. The scent is based on... Gillette Wild Rain, which is a uh, aftershave from the early to mid 90s, and as such, it's got it's got that aquatic fougere sort of vibe, uh, not too different from Calvin Klein Eternity or Dolce and Gabbana Porom, Azaro Chrome, that kind of style of scent. The soap base is not that important because it's an obsolete soap base. I don't remember. I think it was a tallow soap base, but I honestly don't remember. If I'm wrong, go ahead and put it in the comment section of the video. But that is the sample for today. And I'm going to chase that with some Dunhill Black aftershave because I think the, the scent of the aftershave matches the scent of the soap quite well. This is actually a discontinued designer aftershave. I have a couple bottles of this. This bottle is freaking heavy. You can give somebody a concussion with this thing. The lid, I don't know if you can hear this. The lid is almost as heavy as the bottle. It's got to be like made out of lead or something. This bottle is a fantastic presentation. I liked it so much that I actually sent a free bottle over to uh, Mel from BBS Live because I figured that would kind of, kind of, match well with his personal style and it turns out it actually does. So Mel over at BBS Live loves this stuff too. That's the aftershave. The razor is going to be the Supply Single Edge Pro and I think this is going to be the third use of a Ted Pella blade. You can't take the blade out of it after every shave and so I'm just going to use it until it starts feeling uncomfortable. But it's a chrome-plated zinc razor. It's uh, an adjustable injector type razor. Here's the injector keyhole right there. And it's been giving me surprisingly good shaves. I guess I'm not sure why I should be, should be so surprised because it uh, sells really well. It's one of the best selling uh, uh, single edge razors out there. So, And the brush is going to be from Rudy Vey. If I can get the uh, logo to focus, it might not. It's kind of a, let me see if I can get this thing, there we go. It's got his etched logo in right there. It's kind of hard to see, but in any case, this is a 22 millimeter uh, fake horn, Mula Synthetic. It's a really good synthetic knot, I love this thing. Love using this brush. Okay, let's do it. Okay, I am about halfway through the lathering process here in the Pereira Shavery Bowl. Do me a favor, uh, go ahead and put in the comments section uh, if you appreciate the top-down uh, video of the lathering process. Or if you don't need it, don't want it, don't care about it, put that in the comments section as well. I personally could take it or leave it. I'm still waiting on a, a replacement tripod because my old one broke. I have two tripods, one that the camera is sitting on right now and another one that does the top-down shot of the lathering process. Personally, I could take the whole, I could, the whole process, I could take it or leave it. I mean, it wouldn't hurt my feelings none if uh, I didn't do it anymore. It, uh, 
honestly just adds an extra step to the editing process. So, but let me know what you would prefer, because I am here for your entertainment. All right, let's do a sense strength check on this. I think this is a pretty robust four out of five. This, the sense strength on this is, is pretty high, all things considered. It's an old sample that's been sitting around for a while, so the fact that the sense strength is still that strong is uh, pretty impressive. By the time I get back to my collection back in the States, they will have been sitting there for about two years. So, I'm hoping that half of my collection didn't lose its scent strength in that, uh, in that amount of time, or didn't lose its scent altogether. Uh, before I left, I went through and actually grabbed all my pucks and tightened the lids down pretty tight. So, I can't imagine they're going to lose their scent strength that much. I don't know. What do you think? I know there's people who are watching who probably owned uh, soaps that are older than this channel, so definitely let me know what you think. I'm definitely giving you stuff to conversate about today. All right, let me wet the face. And I've got three days of growth on the face today, which uh, most razors and razor blades would tend to be tuggy and kind of start to hurt a little bit with that amount of growth just because my facial hair is so thick and coarse and just doesn't shave easily. Uh, but the supply razor with the Ted Pella blade so far has no such issue, so we'll see. There are a couple soaps where I had performance issues. I'm talking about the re old reserve base that's not around anymore. Uh, like they just wouldn't lather. So this one seems to be okay, but personally I'm happy to see this soap base die because I had some pretty notorious problems with it. Like I think two out of three soaps uh, the soap would just dissolve, so I'm not sure if I just got like a bad puck twice in a row, but sometimes my sometimes my luck is just that bad. This one, surprisingly, is perfectly fine. I know it wasn't user error because it did it just over and over and over again. with me changing up my leather technique every single time. Okay. Now, let me go ahead and activate the iPhone cheat sheet. Okay, here we go. Took me a second to pull it up. Got the notes on their web page. I didn't even bother to take actual notes. I'm just gonna look from their web page. Okay, here is the Supply Single Edge Pro with a third use Ted Pella blade in it. Let's have a try. And this is still buttery smooth with no end in sight. Okay. Let's talk about the scent of this. It's actually fairly simple. The notes, according to Barrister and Mann, are C notes, C notes, excuse me, lavender, geranium, and bergamot. That's it. It's fairly simple, on paper anyway. Uh, and I can tell you that it does smell kind of like a dated 1990s sort of scent. The lavender and geranium are giving it this kind of almost minty green floral sort of facet. Because lavender and geranium are kind of the, the common scent notes in a fougere. A fougere will almost always have lavender and geranium.
It's got some very interesting aquatic notes. It's kind of a green type of scent, if I'm being honest. I find it interesting that I think the new label, let me look and see what the label looks like on the new one. It's kind of like a, almost like a faded turquoise. I think this is this would would have been better served with a green label because it's a very green, uh, herbaceous, aquatic smelling, slightly citrusy sort of thing. But that's just me. I'm not sure why I like it so much. I just think it's because it's a unique scent. It's an aquatic scent, very unlike most others. I mean, this is based on a commercial aftershave. So, and it does smell like that. It doesn't smell remarkably high quality. But that's not Barrister and Mann's fault. They were simply replicating a scent that was very inexpensive and relatively low quality to begin with. So right now this is at setting three. I'm gonna do something stupid. I'm gonna crank it up to a four and try it on my neck. All it's really doing is giving you more blade gap. It's not even really giving you more exposure necessarily. In fact, as far as like absolute aggressiveness goes, this is a fairly mild sort of thing. Did it make it any more blade feely cranking it up? I don't know. I don't think it feels much different. Maybe it's just one of those adjustable razors that One of those adjustable razors that just feels mild no matter what setting it's on. Like I know the Gillette Slim Adjustable is not remarkably aggressive at any setting. So... This is definitely a phenomenal scent though. I love this. I thought about buying another puck, but if I bought a puck for every scent I missed, my collection would be over here and not over there. So I can't do that. So some stuff is just going to have to wait for, for gratification. Residual slickness on this is pretty good, as you can plainly see. Okay. Let's see how I did. Took a bit of blade buffing. It's a mild razor, even at four. Uh, but it's comfortable. It's very comfortable. I got a good enough shave. Fairly typical shave here on the Soap Thing project. Okay, let's do the Dunhill black after shave splash the rev limiter on this is pretty generous it throws it out at you probably not good if you're somebody who's prone to peeling out but i digress oh that smells good this is um a bit more herbaceous and woody, but it's still a, in my opinion, a substantially similar scent to the shaving soap. Which reminds me, where'd I put it? 
Here it is right here, Barrister and Man Reserve Waves. I already told you this is soap thing approved, so if this is something that kind of piques your interest, I would definitely pick it up and give it a try. I think you can get samples at Maggard and the Razor Company possibly uh, that are the new version, but the, the scent should not have changed. Phenomenal scent. If you're into like aquatic, aromatic, floral stuff, this is definitely something to check out. Okay, questions, comments, put them in the comments section of the video. Otherwise, this is Soap Thing telling you, shave like you mean it. Thanks for watching.